This is Plant-Based Briefing. Congress must stop USDA's kitten and other animal experiments, says Whistleblower. By Jim Keen, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine at truthout.org and posted at all-creatures.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson, and this is the Curated Content Podcast with short daily episodes and a variety of plant-based topics. Today's post is in honor of National Whistleblower Day. It's actually the 243rd anniversary of America's first whistleblower law, passed July 30, 1778, during the height of the American Revolution. It was passed after 10 whistleblowers reported wrongdoing and abuses committed by a superior officer in the Continental Navy. There's a website, nationalwhistleblowersday.org, and there's an event with scheduled speakers, including elected representatives, but also a lot of whistleblowers who are going to be sharing their stories. Pretty interesting. According to the website, the day celebrates the people who raise their voice in the name of combating fraud, corruption, and other crimes, their courage in the face of great adversity, and the strength of their conviction and dedication to the truth. In the animal rights movement, whistleblowers and investigative reporters are absolutely crucial because as we know, laboratories and slaughterhouses do not have glass walls and the truth is very well hidden, for good reason. Today's post is from all-creatures.org. They're dedicated to cruelty-free living through a vegan lifestyle and their website's full of vegan resources, including blogs, quotes, poetry, and resources for animal rights activism as well. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. Congress must stop USDA's kitten and other animal experiments, says Whistleblower, from Jim Keen, DVM, at truthout.org and posted at all-creatures.org. In December, the Senate introduced legislation called the Kittens in Traumatic Testing Ends Now, or Kitten, Act, the companion to a bipartisan House bill of the same name targeting outdated food safety experiments at the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the USDA. As Senator Jeff Merkley, Democrat Oregon, explained to CNN when he introduced the bill, quote, The USDA breeds up to 100 kittens a year, feeds them parasite-infected meat in order to have the parasite's eggs harvested for use in other experiments, and then kills the kittens. This bill would essentially stop this process, unquote. To date, the project has consumed 22 million tax dollars and taken the lives of 3,000 kittens. I was disturbed, but not at all surprised when I read about the experiment, because for two decades I worked as a veterinarian and researcher at the USDA's Meat Animal Research Center, or MARC, in Nebraska, the world's largest livestock research center. When I finally blew the whistle on the extensive government waste and animal abuse I witnessed at the USDA, it destroyed my career, and ultimately my marriage. But I would do it again. As I explain in Natalie Portman's recent documentary, Eating Animals, soon after starting at Mark, a colleague sought my assistance with a downed cow, unable to stand on her own. The young heifer was corralled with six bulls in a sexual libido experiment. Libido is typically measured by placing one bull with one cow in heat for 15 minutes. However, the bulls continuously mounted the heifer, immobilized in a restraint device so she could not escape, for hours. Her back legs were broken. Mark denied me permission to euthanize her. She died hours later from her severe injuries. Sadly, this extreme quote-unquote research project was not an anomaly. Mark uses more than 22 million taxpayer dollars and 35,000 animals annually, focusing on science and technology to make red meat production more efficient and profitable. In addition, Mark performs heavily taxpayer-subsidized targeted research on behalf of livestock commodity groups. USDA in-house agricultural research receives a total of $1.2 billion annually from taxpayers, and Mark is just one of 36 total USDA livestock animal research facilities. Precise figures for USDA animal research investments and attendant waste are impossible to ascertain, in part because the government obfuscates financial and animal use data. According to the USDA's website, quote, Mark Research will be used to develop technologies that can be implemented into production programs, which will reduce production costs and improve carcass merit, unquote. In lay terms, their quest is to boost livestock industry profits. In the process, Mark researchers undertake all manner of senseless experiments and scientific and fiduciary malpractice that cost animals and taxpayers dearly. For instance, cows usually have one offspring. In nature, less than 2% have twins. 
Mark scientists decided to try and double production efficiency by increasing twinning frequency. From 1981 until 2011, Mark raised one herd's twinning rate to over 50% using intense genetic selection. However, twinning in cows is unnatural, evolution so decided over millions of years. Twinning cows and their offspring suffered from sickness, congenital defects, and early death. After 30 years and countless tax dollars Mark abandoned the project, there is no market for twinning cows. In fact, most farmers cull cows birthing twins due to the well-known associated health problems. I supported intensive livestock farming and research for decades. However, I gradually turned against factory farming in part from the alternative example of sustainable, environment and animal respectful practices I observed on my daughter Hannah's small organic farm. So after decades of witnessing and facilitating Mark's indefensible projects, in 2014, I went to the New York Times to share evidence of these abuses. One experiment I reported was the so-called, quote-unquote, Easy Care Sheep Project, designed to resurrect the dying U.S. sheep industry. The goal was to create a new sheep breed requiring minimal human labor via brutal neo-Darwinian selection. From 2002 to 2017, countless sheep birthing twins or triplets were kept year-round on isolated pastures without shelter or shade. Shepherds were prohibited by experimental protocol from intervening to care for ewes or lambs in need. Predictably, human-dependent domestic sheep, treated like wild sheep, fared poorly. Over 15 years, countless lambs died from coyote predation, starvation, exposure, abandonment, difficult birth, and disease. The research failed completely, squandering untold tax dollars. For going public with my concerns, I was surveilled by law enforcement and interviewed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, as a possible, quote-unquote, eco-terrorist. I was banished from Mark, quote, interviewed by University of Nebraska, a Mark partner, police, called, quote, the most evil person on the planet, unquote, by the Mark director, and eventually transferred 100 miles away. Whistleblowing placed an enormous strain on my personal and professional life. I incurred large legal and medical expenses. My career suffered but survived. Sadly, my 32-year-long marriage did not. I knew the risks, and I am responsible for my actions and their consequences. However, as an American taxpayer, veterinarian sworn to protect animals, and federal employee who was a steward of public dollars, I felt obliged to expose this government waste and abuse. For its part, the USDA essentially received a few slaps on the wrist, and evidence uncovered last year shows that major animal welfare problems persist at Mark and other agency facilities. In addition to the kitten testing mentioned above, inspection reports from several USDA facilities show that in 2017, more than a dozen ducks died of dehydration, 38 turkeys died of starvation, and dozens of quails were found dead in a lab with a temperature of 130 degrees Fahrenheit when a heating system failed and there was no warning system in place to alert staff of the temperature change. I believe most Americans and even livestock producers would be hard-pressed to support some experiments the USDA is doing or has done on their behalf and with their money. A 2018 national poll of 1,000 Americans commissioned by the taxpayer watchdog White Coat Waste Project found 68% of voters want to reduce taxpayer-funded research intended to benefit agribusiness. I put my career and family on the line to expose USDA waste and abuse. Congress must now act to protect animal welfare and prevent further misuse of American tax dollars on cruel and unnecessary research. Supporting the bipartisan Common Sense Kitten Act to get cats out of the USDA's horrific labs is a great start. You just listened to Congress Must Stop USDA's Kitten and Other Animal Experiments, Says Whistleblower, from Jim Keen, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine at Truthout.org, and posted at all-creatures.org. This article was posted in January of 2019, and according to foodwhistleblower.org, as a result of Dr. Keene's whistleblowing, federal legislation was proposed but not passed that would have applied the Animal Welfare Act to federal research facilities like Mark. However, in April of 2019, the USDA announced they were pulling the plug on this specific kitten research project. The announcement came two weeks after NBC News reported that scientists had bought hundreds of dogs and cats from Asian meat markets and then had them euthanized and fed to healthy cats at their Maryland lab. 
So it's great news that this particular experiment stopped, but it's likely because they were cute, adorable kittens that are normally companion animals. Think about all the other experiments that are still going on that nobody cares about. Thank goodness for whistleblowers like veterinarian Jim Keen and for watchdog organizations like the White Coat Waste Project. Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, one of the podcast contributors, is another organization that's fighting to end these unnecessary and cruel science experiments. These organizations need all the support we can give them, whether it's sharing their information and sharing posts on social media, financial donations, whatever. It all is important. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. Thanks for listening.